This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Resound with a Z on Verizon Wireless. This phone is going to be available November 14th, 2011, for the usual $299 with a contract, and it's one of three top Verizon LTE phones for the holiday season. This, the Droid Razor by Motorola, and the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Nexus phone. So you can see this is a fairly big phone. I mean, they all are, but it's 4.3 inch display. But one of the things that makes this special is this 1280 by 720p. That's very high resolution. It's your standard Super LCD. Nothing's going on with Super AMOLED or anything like that here. And of course, it has LTE on Verizon. If you take a look around. Well, from the front, it's your standard HTC curvy kind of phone here. Red accents. You've got the red earpiece over here, a little metal going on on the side. Here's our volume rocker. Subtle, shall we say. Doesn't stick up much. One piece rocks back and forth. On the top here, this is the power button. Very small and, and very flush, so you really have to work to find that guy. Headphone jacks right there. And on the back we have the sculpted pattern. Kind of rugged, rubbery looking thing with the red around the lens, dual LED flash. And the Beats logo, because this comes with a set of Beats earbuds. And you can see the kind of like incredible style back that we've got here. And there's your micro USB. This is actually one of HTC specialty ports. It also works with an MHL adapter. Microphone hole here. Microphone hole here. And if we pull off the back, by the way, two more microphone holes here. And this is your speaker. It's all bright red inside, and shades of incredible, incredible too. You can see there's a 16 gig card pre-installed. You do have to pull out the battery to access that card to swap it in and out. And the LTE SIM card slot is right here, and here's the battery, also obviously in red, 1620 milliamps. That's kind of a low capacity battery for an LTE phone, since LTE is a big consumer power, not to mention this has a dual core CPU and a reasonably large display. So don't expect this guy to be the champ of battery life. One thing that does help it though is it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset that works with the LTE chipset very nicely in terms of power management efficiency. And speaking again of that Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU chipset and LTE, we found that this has better LTE reception in, in reception challenged areas like ours where we have trouble holding on to an LTE signal with the Droid Bionic and the Droid Razor. This guy stays real solid on about two bars of reception where they actually drop it. So that's something to be said for the Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU used in this. Standard specs of the phone are 1.5 GHz dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 CPU with Adreno 220 graphics. It has 16 gigs of internal storage and you get that 16 gig micro SD card as well pre-installed in the slot. It has a gig of RAM and the usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. And again, the big selling point, 1280 by 720 pixel display. So let's take a look at the box and what you get inside. Box is an awful lot like the Droid Razors. Big black box. Open it up, and there you got your Beats earbuds right here. Nice earbuds, good sound from these guys. And you get many little rubber tips here so you can find something that fits your ears. And inside there, the nice red cord that goes with it. And you get a little bag to carry your headphones in and whatever other little things you've got. And one of those you squeeze them open and then there's all the other earbuds that you get with it. Reading material, SIM card, and the usual HTC charger and USB cable. Here we have the HTC Resound in comparison with the Motorola Droid Razor, just came out on the 11th of November, and the Droid Bionic, the old standby, the flagship from two months ago. You can see they're all about the same size. The Razor obviously has the biggest dimensions across and height-wise, but it is way thinner. Razor has a Super AMOLED display, which I find quite pleasing, and has actually very balanced colors. We'll compare that looking at Google Books in a minute, so you can see what text looks like and, and color temperature. The Resound is no skinny phone, obviously, especially compared to something incredibly thin like the Razor. But it is very comfortable to hold, thanks to the curvy size and the slightly smaller width. It feels nice in the hand. And then compared to the Bionic, which is one of the thinnest LTE phones,
Now in terms of voice quality, I have to say that both Motorola phones are the winner and I think the Bionic might actually have the best call quality to, to my ears for both incoming and outgoing voice. Nice and crisp and clear. The Razer sounds pretty good. It's clear, but it sounds a little bit thinner on incoming and outgoing voice, but it's pretty good. And the Resound is the weakest of all with the least distinct voice. It's not a terrible voice phone, but it's not as good as the Motorola's. So you've got a trade-off here. It's better voice quality on the Motorola's, but better LTE reception on the Resound. Now let's take a look at screen quality and resolution. On the right now we have the Droid Razer, which runs at QHD 960 by 540 pixels with a Super AMOLED display. In the center we have the HTC Resound with its 1280 by 720 display. And on the left we have the Droid Bionic with also QHD 960 by 540, just straight LCD. So you can see the differences here. The typical of AMOLED, this one is a little bit starker and brighter, though it's more accurate than, say, Samsung Galaxy S2 in terms of color. It actually looks warm compared to the Galaxy S2, which is interesting. In the center, we have the highest resolution one. This should have the sharpest text, and we've got the text set pretty small, so you can see how readable or not it is, and it is indeed very, very sharp. Particularly, it looks good in low lighting, the kind of environment you might be reading it, and the letters, boy, you certainly cannot see a single pixel there. Very sharp and nice. And then, well, gee, the Bionic actually looks quite good. It looks actually the most color accurate. Very white page, and the text, text is very crisp on the page. So it, it's, it's very good for that, despite the fact that it has the most boring LCD technology among the three of these. Now, if we make the fonts bigger, now we've enlarged the point size at two points, so it might be easier for you to see on video the Christmas. And this one still has slightly smaller fonts because it is a higher resolution display. So if, even even though Google with Android is, is doing some control over scaling to keep things readable, th this will always have slightly f smaller fonts. One thing to note is as you get off angle, the brightness is not set very high on the Motorola. It starts to look kind of blue. This guy starts to get, get kind of purple. This one is actually perfectly white. The Resound runs Android OS 2.3.4 Gingerbread and HTC Sense 3.5. So you get the latest version of HTC Sense here and their usual set of widgets and the flip clock with weather that everybody loves. The shortcuts here to quick to your phone dialer screen, access all applications and personalize for quick settings for your wallpaper, sound themes, all that kind of stuff. And this is set up in the usual arrangement. You've got your all apps, you can go to frequent, you can go just to downloaded, and this one has an additional tab for Verizon wireless applications. And this is an up-down kind of scroll thing between each of these guys here. And there's everything that Verizon has pre-installed in its own little separate place. Things that we've downloaded. Frequently accessed applications. And then you get the usual friend stream for social networking. Big fat widget there and a very nice application for social networking. Quick access to your settings, GPS, Bluetooth, mobile, brightness. Not Wi-Fi though, by default. Interesting. Their big calendar. Love that. HTC Watch, which is on board, and people there for your folks. In terms of speed, on the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, we saw wickedly fast numbers in the 3000s. Well, not so much here on this phone. That may have something to do with power management, or more likely it's driving a much higher resolution display here than it is with the 800 by 480 Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. Quadrant number was 2421, which is about average for a dual core phone in the 1 gigahertz to 1.2 gigahertz range, so we're not blazing any new trails in speed there. Linpack was for some reason a little bit unstable. We got anywhere from 52 to 73 in the multi thread test. Did very well in the SunSpider JavaScript test, though it managed a 2998, which is pretty good for a phone. It's not the all time best that again we saw on the Skyrocket, which is just phenomenal and it's not as good as the iPhone 4S, but beyond that, it's, it's pretty good speed. Sometimes we see 4,000 all the way up to 6,000 on some Android phones. So that's good, especially combined with the LTE data speeds here. Speaking of LTE, we've been running speed tests on this guy. And you, you can see we've had speeds that are kind of bouncing around here. 9 megs per second, 6, 9 again, 10, 8 for download speeds. And outdoors, closer to a tower, we had a phenomenal 23.8 megs down and 8 megs up. 
Some of our upload speeds were a little bit slow here, but that was just kind of a glitch. And on average, you can see that we're seeing about 2 to 2.5 two megs for upload speeds. Now, that's good, but that doesn't beat the Motorola Droid Bionic or the Razer, who are so far, for download speed tests and upload speed tests using speed test, the all-time champs. And they average 13 to 16 in the same location where we were seeing uh, average about 9 megs down here. Now, as I mentioned, web browsing speed is great. Between the LTE and, and the very fast JavaScript rendering, we see some very good performance here. I'll check it out by visiting our own site. And you can see the standard HTC keyboard here, which we like a lot. It's one of our favorite keyboards. Our site downloads pretty quickly, and that's a full desktop site. Zooming speeds, nice and fluid. Ads are not bothering it at all. So let's see how it handles Adobe Flash playback. Adobe Flash may be on the way out for mobiles, but right now it's still a useful thing. Let's play in style. Let's pop it out to full screen. The Ultrabook is Intel's new initiative to bring. The Ultrabook is Intel's new initiative on its 13 points. So here we go. Boy, that's playing nice and smoothly. Absolutely no problem there. Windows 7 notebook is made entirely of a So that's Adobe Flash in the web browser. One thing I want to note is because of the relatively high resolution here on, on this phone, notice how teeny tiny the fonts are. If you're looking at a desktop site, a mobile site, of course, is going to have much larger fonts, but you're definitely going to be doing a little more zooming there to keep things readable or use a double tap zoom method to, to bring things out. And then it's fine and it's readable. How about video playback? Given the high resolution display and also the fairly fast CPU, we're going to take a look at some videos that we have here. And we'll go straight to a 1080p high profile video. You can use the MHL adapter to output 1080p to your TV, otherwise you probably don't want to watch 1080p on the screen of the device. But 720p would be perfect because this is a true 720p display. Plays smoothly, looks sharp. And here the speaker is pretty good, it's fairly loud and full, not tinny at all. Kind of nice having Beats Audio on board here. You can also see, since the backlighting is on, that you've got red masked buttons instead of the usual white ones for the capacitive buttons. Part of the whole red theme here on this phone. Very loud speaker. Also, for those of you who are concerned about battery life, there will be an inductive back available for this, for those of you who have the inductive charging pad that Verizon sells in stores, so you can be able to charge it just by plopping it on the inductive charger. So what comes preloaded? Right here you can see just in looking at the Verizon tab, you've got their backup assistant, Blockbuster Video, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Demo, Amazon Kindle, the mobile hotspot feature, which is awesome when you have an LTE phone. This really makes for a wonderful wireless high-speed hotspot for your laptop or tablet. We've got mobile IM, VCAS video, my Verizon mobile, NFL mobile, let's golf too, couldn't live with that, that could we? Slacker radio, video surf, visual voicemail, and VZ navigator. So plenty of stuff been added on there. Some of it's actually useful. And you have all your standard Google applications. You have maps, navigation, search, YouTube player, Google Talk, and HTC includes Polaris Office, and that's a full version. It, it, it has a pretty simple UI on it, but it does do things like create new Office documents, Word and Excel. And there's our interface. You get the nice little keyboard, so you can start typing along there. And if you hit the menu button, you can see the very basic controls. So a pretty simple Office suite, but better than nothing. The Resound has one of HTC's newer, better cameras. It's the 8 megapixel with a backlit sensor, illuminated backlit sensor. It takes really good shots. F2.2 F lens, 28 millimeters, so fairly wide view. It takes good pictures. Now let's see how fast it can focus on our little friend the Razor there. 
pretty fast. And we'll move it around. A little bit of hunting to focus, but pretty good. And you've got all sorts of settings here. ISO, white balance, image setting types, resolution, review duration, storage, auto enhancement, autofocus, shutter sound, all that kind of stuff, and a whole lot of scene modes, including a macro mode, so it's pretty nice stuff. And you switch to video mode using the slider here. And now we'll test out video recording here. We've got a video and a video, and we're moving around and panning on our razor. And now we'll test out video recording here. We've got a video and a video. We're Not bad, actually. Moving around and panning on our razor. So there you go. Eight megapixel shooter on the back. And you've got our front camera for video chat as well with Skype, Google Talk, whatever you like to use. And since this is a Beats phone, well, we got to take a look at the music player here. And this is a very basic interface you're looking at for some tunes. And now we'll check out a tune. Pretty good speaker. Again, much better than the little Beats earbuds. And you can turn on sound enhancement when you have earbuds on. And you can turn on sound enhancement when you have earbuds on, and you can update album art. There's that sound enhancement, so use the headphones. And it's a music player. So that's the HTC Resound for Verizon Wireless, available November 14th for $299 with contract. And it definitely has some tough competition, doesn't it, with the Motorola Droid Razor and the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Nexus. What does this bring to the table? It has that high resolution display, higher resolution than the Droid Razor. I know some of you don't actually like the Super AMOLED on the Droid Razor. Uh, this is definitely sharper for reading text if you want to use it for reading ebooks. You get the Beats audio and the Beats earbuds, they sound pretty good. And, and you get the, the better LTE reception, as I mentioned. If, if you're in a place that has, well, great LTE signal all the time, it really probably won't matter to you. But if you're in a kind of signal challenge LTE area, this one really holds on to a weaker signal like nothing else without the ping-ponging back and forth that I've seen on my personal Droid Bionic and even the Droid Razor between 3G and 4G. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read a review of the HTC Resound on Verizon.